This is the uh, multi-stage startup routine. Uh, I have, this is a Primus MFS stove. I have a syringe here that has approximately four cc's of Coleman fuel in it and about one half cc of uh, air that'll be used to clear the dead space that is in this adapter that I've made up. It's a prototype. This particular device has got what is called a lure lock. It's for syringes type of adapter here that has some threads on it and it attaches to this again. It's a prototype. It's a brass piece that has lindel type threads that have been placed in the in this portion. This will thread into this portion of the fuel line and once this is threaded in and put in tightly enough to seal it from with the o-ring I will then inject if you want to call it that opening the control valve this fuel with the air chaser if you want to call it that too it will go through the line I've already calibrated the line and it takes about four and a half cc's to go from this point to where fuel comes out of the jet. I don't want to load this up too much with fuel, so I, I'm, I, I don't put in quite the full amount. That's why it's four cc's of fuel. And the half cc is to clear the dead space because that's how much this prototype adapter has. It's approximately a half cc from this point here to this point here. There's no point in filling this up with fuel and then disconnecting it. This would be just wasted. But again, for, for this purpose. So this airspace here is for that purpose. Uh, so that's what, what this starts off. When I get ready to start the stove, I will use the chimney that I've been using before and also the routine startup. This is 1cc of denatured alcohol, a long blunt needle that I use for putting it into the priming pan. This bottle here is the standard uh, Primus pump. Uh, as you can see, the Lindel threads here are the same type of threads that are used for this little adapter. And this has got um, about 50 to 60 milliliters of kerosene in it. It's a 350 milliliter bottle. And I've put in about 60 or 70 pumps of air because I've already used this for part of my um, testing and I didn't want to release the pressure. So it's got quite a lot of pressure in it already. This is, uh, again, this adapter, and I'm just simply going to put it into the area that normally a canister would go or the Primus pump would go, and just hand tighten it so that it's against the O-ring to seal it. This control valve I will open up in order to allow fuel from this syringe to go through the line you have to remember, after you've put fuel in the line, to close off the valve before you disconnect things, otherwise it'll leak out. So I open it up a couple turns, and because I want to get this air chaser to, to, to move the fuel through, I will just put this on like this, and, and then start putting in the fuel and then close off the valve disconnect the syringe and remove the adapter as you can see there's not much Extra, a little bit of extra fuel that came out, but again, this is just a prototype. All right, I'm getting ready to start up the stove. This is the syringe with the denatured alcohol in it, and I will just put it in uh, one cc, and I will put it in the priming pad, and then.
start it up. It's hard to see this in the daylight. Uh, one of the things I have found is that, as you can see, some of the residual fuel that has come through the line begins to start immediately um, um, starting to burn, essentially, because we have a combination here of some residual fuel that is in the fuel line, the Coleman fuel that I just injected, in addition to the uh, alcohol. You can probably hear it roaring a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and take advantage of this. Okay, you can hear it already going. Now what I want to do is, I want to have this as low as possible because I want to give this a chance to warm up before the kerosene hits it. Technically, if this is kept low enough, it might be enough to heat up the generator. It takes about a minute and a half or so before the kerosene actually contacts the generator. If this is not heated up enough, it will then, you'll get some spurting of yellow flames, which of course you don't want. But during the time that this is heating up, you can set this up for cooking purposes. As I've shown before in another video. And put a pot on here and actually start cooking. You will have to monitor this a bit to make sure because again the kerosene is coming through the line here as I speak and when it finally when it finally hits this it will be pretty obvious and you want to make sure that you're monitoring this so if you had a pot in here and you're getting ready to boil water or something like that take advantage of the Coleman fuel to to provide heat Now, you can tell that we're getting pretty close to the kerosene. Okay, we're almost there now. Again, you have to monitor this. And okay, that's probably getting close to the kerosene. Because the kerosene is so oily and viscous, it, it doesn't respond as quickly on the control valve. This, I think, is the kerosene taking hold. As you can see, the transition is relatively minor. As long as you are keeping an eye on this, and as long as the um, generator is adequately heated up. Otherwise, you get something like this. Now again, notice that the time that it took to get the to get the fuel over to this point. I would think at this point you probably would remove the pot to give this a chance just to catch up. Uh, and once the once Kerosene burns very hot, and when it when it's finally going, it produces an awful lot of heat at the generator, and then this uh, this minor bit of, of sputtering completely stops. But it takes a while for that to happen. The Coleman fuel is relatively a much cooler burning fuel compared to the kerosene, which is why it takes a while. Now at this point, it's pretty much already uh, heated up. There's not much in terms of any kind of residual uh, yellow flame or anything like that, so you can still uh, continue with your, um, your cooking and things like that. That's pretty much wide open. And again, I have about 70 pumps of air in the, in the uh, fuel bottle. And this gives you an idea of what, again, 0.28 millimeter jet. And this is fully, fully warmed up, fully operational. 
If you want to go ahead and try to do a simmer, you can get some reasonable simmer on these stoves. It's not anything close to what you get from Coleman fuel, but it isn't uh, terrible either. You have to watch it. And you have to adjust it because, and again, kerosene responds uh, much more slowly. So you have to kind of almost anticipate with this kind of stove where the control valve was at the fuel bottle, um, you have to almost anticipate some kind of a change. Those like the OmniFuel that have the control valve also at the stove, uh, there's a much quicker response time. But as you can see, this is not terrible, not terrible for simmering, especially when compared to the full open uh, position. And then to shut it down, it's just the same routine as I've done before. You elevate the fuel line a bit. You elevate the tail of the bottle a little bit to make sure that you're clearing everything. And then um, this is also an opportunity to judge the condition of the uh, jet because uh, if the jet is in good condition and not stopping up, then there will be um, a very rapid transition from full operational uh, output to just a hiss. And that's, that's a good indication. had left the chimney on for the entire time the Coleman fuel was there, it would have been enough to have probably preheated this. So there wouldn't have been any yellow flame when the kerosene finally hit. There's our transition and then a hiss and you immediately turn it off. And that's all there is to that.